So from August 18th of 2024 to now, they built months. this. They built this entire Eight building. Months. That's crazy. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Tesla Owners of Silicon Valley. I'm John, and I am so excited because we are behind Giga Nevada. And as we know, this is literally, there's so much history here from Elon sleeping on the ground when uh, they couldn't put out enough batteries because they were, the cars were rolling off the line. And so it just, there's so much history here. And this plant is only growing. It's been revealed that the Tesla Semi production, the mass volume production line will be built here. Um, and one of the coolest things about this factory um, is not only obviously the, the just what they're doing in the factory, but outside of that, just the free range horses that they have here. Um, and so I'm excited today to get kind of a deep dive in how this plant has changed over time and with a special guest, Zane. So Zane, um, he covers all things Giga Nevada from a drone, um, really a top-down perspective. Uh, but Zane, just tell us a little bit about like what got you out here, um, and then let's just deep dive into you know how things have changed, and then potentially like how how things are looking today. Well, the interesting thing is, is if you remember the original uh, announcement was that they were going to add on to the original Giga factory Nevada GF1 and um, and make it fill it up because it's sort of an L shape now and they were going to complete it and then not a few months later it came out that they were actually going to build a separate building and um, you know they never elaborated on why but I think it was just made a lot of sense to have a separate building and not interfere with the um, existing battery and uh, drive motor production up there so what they so this is what they did and i um and what is this this is uh <laughs> this is giga semi what i call giga semi it's the high volume tesla semi production building that's under construction and um to me it's mind-boggling to think that fifty thousand semis a year towards the run rate at the end Great. of 2026 is what they're projecting that's something like 125 a day. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit right now. What what do they produce here at Giga Nevada? And, and gig, up right there, now. up there that big building up there is shared by Panasonic. The south end of the building is Panasonic cell production and they 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 build the individual 2170 battery cells and they hand them over to the Tesla section of that building and they put them into battery packs. And those battery packs are delivered to um, Fremont for Model 3s and Model Ys and for Plaids. Actually, I take that back. Plaids are 18650s. And they also build drive motors there. I do not believe that they, they build the Plaid drive motor there. I think the Plaid mo drive motor is built up there. But tying that back to the Tesla Semi, they, are, they have been for, for many months delivering those battery packs, pre-assembled battery packs and drive motors over I-80, the Donner Pass and the High Sierras over to Fremont. Just about every day, production trucks run over there. With the Tesla Semi. With the Tesla Semi. Yeah, I mean, so I've I've been literally, cause he's uh, the boots on the ground. So I've been asking for, for all the cool spots. And like, we were just like scoping things out this morning, last night, and they're going all the time. You're seeing one, like a semi come out almost every like 15 minutes throughout the whole day. And it's truly incredible what they're doing here. But tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, how has the, um, how has the factory been changing over the years? We don't necessarily have to get into today, but how have you seen things as you first started droning over this and how have things changed over the years? Well, a year ago, December is when they first started. They, this used to be a giant warehouse on wheels. Uh, loaded with uh, trailers that they used for uh, supplier parts. And um, they moved all those out. And that was my first sign that something was different, that they weren't going to expand that major, that first, you know, the original GF1. They moved all those out. And for months, they simply did ground prep work. They put in um, stormwater management pipe and utility drainage. And I think it was August 18th. That corner over there where the flag is, is where the first steel went vertical. 
Wow. And um, Dan Priestley made that announcement on X, and I happened to be here, coincidentally, that day later, <laughs> and, and videoed it. And so from August 18th of 2024 to now, they built, this, they built this entire Eight building. That's crazy. And it should go, you know, I should mention that, one, Tesla is their own general contractor. They don't sublet that out. They're in charge of building the machine that builds the machine that builds the machine. And it's just, I'm just totally impressed. And I think most people who have been following along are really impressed too at the speed and the way that they, they came up with a new way of building this. They didn't bring in cranes crazy. until the very end. They, they partnered with a company called BZI and they have um, the, the three, three main pieces are the Mesmaster, the panel table and the sky bridges. And basically they build the roof panels on the ground just six feet up so they don't have to have safety gear. They're not building it up there. And then this piece of equipment called the Mesmaster comes and picks it up and it can articulate sideways and go in tight spots, lift it up and put it on the roof. No cranes, because cranes are expensive. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> well, thankfully it was flat, but yeah, it's it's crazy just, you know, the innovation that, that Tesla runs at. I mean, you saw Shanghai, you know, literally they built that in less than a year, it was a swamp to, and then same thing with Austin. Um, how have things, uh, for you, like if you were to look at just kind of the whole landscape, what is kind of like in, from your eyes, cause again, you are the eyes in the sky here, you know, what's kind of the layout. If you were to think of like, you're literally flying a drone right now, what is the layout of this whole campus that we have here? Well, the, the, the far Northwest corner is where that first steel went vertical. And I used to always get a shot, a, a a photo from that so that I could do time lapse. And I was mentioning earlier, I kind of stopped doing that because it's it's done. You don't even need the render anymore because you got the real building here. Mm. But I usually start at the northwest and I go across. This is the northern face, the long face to the northeast, and I do a circumnavigation of the entire plant. And we saw it go from footings, the columns, beams, and and then the roof material the roof insulation, and then the waterproof membrane. And they finished that whole entire building, section A, B, C, D, E, and F, where they're individual units, and they're just sort of next to each other, and, and there's a little ridge line that connects them. So they're independent, six independent buildings. And then the stamping section is where we've been focused lately, mm. and it's just clearly the most complicated technical section of the building with those giant pits for the stamping machines and it's been fascinating and that's probably a month or two away from being complete and i think at least we learned a little bit but like i think you know why do they have those big pits it's it's, it's to absorb all of the pressure that's coming from when it's being stamped right yeah and also the they can take the the um the the steel uh detritus the stuff that the stuff the leftover steel they they can bring out from below and i think if you look at the videos they built a little appendage and i think that's and an underwater i mean underground elevator and i think that's where the uh recycled steel will come out but we'll see time will tell yeah, yeah. when you when you think because obviously you you cover this from the sky when you think of austin potentially fremont and even like Berlin and some of the, maybe um, if you viewed those, what makes Giga Nevada unique? Well, I think that this Giga Semi building is only rivaled by Shanghai in terms of speed. I think they, they've, they keep getting better. And since this is the most recent factory, it's accumulation of everything they've learned from all of those. And the only reason it, it's not faster, as fast as Giga Shanghai probably has to do with regulations and permits, permits and things like that. But but I think it I think it is the state of the art in building factories. Yeah. No, it's really cool. I mean, like, I think what people forget about Tesla because they see the cars. They think it's a car company. And what they don't realize is actually the product is the factory. And here they have the uh, GF1, which is the first Gigafactory, which is the, the L shape. And then now they're building a second product, as they would say. And as you as Elon would say, and as you had mentioned, Tesla is building the machine that builds the machine. And every single new one of these machines that they're building or products that they're building is the machine is the product. And it's just absolutely crazy. And it's that much better. And 
when you hear Dan Priestley talk about it, he, he emphasizes the capital efficiency of this building. I don't know the numbers, but there are all sorts of um, fulfillment centers around here. But I believe that this has been extremely efficient, not just because of the renting a crane is extremely expensive. So even at, you know, and the, the, the buildings are different, but even in Texas, they had cranes on site, those large cranes, and, and that's, all, that's burning cash. What would you say if someone just wants to come see the factory, what are some things that are key call outs or things to see here if they come through? Because it is pretty secluded. I mean, it, yeah. this is set way back, especially from the initial security gate. Um, but is there anything that people can just kind of see from the street that maybe is interesting? There's not much you can see from the street. I think the, the best you can do is, as you know, if you drive up Electric, electric Avenue, you're met by the guard gate and Tesla security is no joke. <laughs> they will turn you around quick, very quickly. Down the street is the, um, the semi-pilot production building, 550 Milan, and that is probably your best viewing in terms of driving by on Milan Avenue, not going onto the property, and seeing, as you mentioned, Tesla semis coming and going. And That's it's awesome. pretty funny, when because you asked me, where, where can I go see some Tesla semis? I said, just... <laughs> just go to just electric go. avenue you'll you'll see dozens you know yeah. back and forth it well i think you know when you think of the tesla semi and and i mean why is the tesla semi important 80 percent of all emissions are literally coming from trucking and that's why tesla you know their mission is uh getting us to a sustainable future and as elon has said sustainable abundance is the key word but either way i think it's crazy you come here, right? I mean, you think of people like Bill Gates who never thought this thing would be real. And I'm sitting here and Tesla is literally running their own whole uh, production of just getting the batteries and the drive units from literally from Reno, um, or really Sparks, all the way to Fremont, which is what, 400 miles, 450 miles, something insane like that. Over the high Sierras. Yeah. So it's and no joke. Exactly. During potentially cold winters where there's snow and other factors like that, again, you know, it's insane that they're being able to test one of their products with making their, their business more efficient and bringing that supply chain in. Cause it's like, it's literally they're driving <laughs> their own products from one location to the next. So John, to your point, you may not even be aware of this. Today, a picture was shared on X of a Tesla semi at the San Pedro- um, In LA. LA uh, port, port of Los Angeles. Yes. Where they un unload thousands and thousands of shipping containers where smog and uh, is is an is a big issue yeah so i mean that that seems like an ideal location to start uh rolling out the tesla semis yeah. well awesome um tell us a little bit about how can people find you um obviously um on x and your youtube channel but give our audience a little bit of how can they if they want to see giga nevada from the sky how can they get in contact with you yeah great um my, my uh, handle on X is at sign Heinrich Zane. I created my, uh, my account before I knew better. <laughs> Didn't put my whole name out there. But if you search Tesla Semi, Giga Nevada Semi, on either YouTube or X, you should easily find me. Yeah, and I think what makes Giga Nevada so unique is, again, is not only are they making batteries here, they're making the powertrains, but really the Tesla Semi, which I think is going to change trucking forever. Trucking is one of the most... Uh, mundane and what what's the word it's just like it's the same uh path every single time and those those roads and maps and paths have all been created and defined and to literally get goods across all of america and the tesla semi will turn that all upside down and making things more efficient uh reducing literally i mean we know we own teslas the cost of maintenance you no longer have to pay for gas um, and just the efficiencies of it all. It's just going to be insane. So make sure you give Zane a follow, especially if you want to see Giga Nevada from the sky. If you want to see the progression of the semi uh, factory as well, along with just some really cool footage of the Tesla semi just driving around the area. Um, so thank you for all you do of just being able to, I think, bring the Tesla community. Uh, you're, you're able to bring their, their eyes to, to the sky and being able to look at it here from a first person perspective. Well, thank you, of appreciate course. that. And one final note is the other thing that everybody looks forward to is not being stuck behind a semi, passing another semi going two miles an hour yes. faster than it. This, if you've seen my original uh, video of a Tesla semi fully loaded going up the uh, Donner Pass grade, 
passing um, other semis, it is, Dan Priestley mentions that it can go highway legal speed on any grade in the country, whether that's 55, 65, or 75, depending on the state. But getting behind one of those slow moving semis on I-5 is a thing of the past. Yeah. Anyway, thank well, you. Yeah, of course. So thank you, Zane, for all you did, for giving us kind of a behind the scenes look uh, for, again, for all you do for the community. So we will see you guys next time. Hopefully you love some of this footage that um, Zane's going to be providing to us of this interview as he's talking. So make sure you give him a follow and we will see you guys next time. Thank you again. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe and comment um, what your favorite things about Giga Nevada, um, things that you learned today that were your favorite. We will see you guys next time.